good morning, everybody. Today's an incredible day. First of all, we have snow, and I'm a winter guy, and so I love the snow. I love the cold. I drive around with my windows down when it's like 29 and, and above. <laughs> Come on, John. <laughs> well, let's stand up. Let's worship the King of Kings, the God of all glory, the one who is the beginning and the end, the one who knows the number of hairs on your head, and he is intimately involved in your life. All we have to do is recognize it, and when we do, we will worship him. Glory! Glory to God.
refreshing
hope in you. We bring all that we are to you.
in this place. You're worthy of our praise. Oh, how you've delivered us. Jesus, mighty God, the Redeemer, the one who is the author and finisher of our faith, the uncreated one, the one who brings everything into existence, the earth, the heavens, the sea, and all that's in them. Worship you, Jesus. Magnify your name. Oh, we lift you up, Jesus. Oh, yes, you're the morning star. We give you glory. Oh, and we look for your soon return. How glorious that will be in the twinkling of an eye. Like lightning flashes, we worship you, Lord. Spirit of the living God, come, descend and rest upon us. Move among us. Reveal truth to us. Shine the light on our path. Yes. Make our footsteps in secure places as we navigate these times that we're in. We give you glory and honor in this place. Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. Amen and amen. Well, greet one another and you may be seated. morning community life church welcome back it's so good to see each and every one of you today we have snow on the ground that's right that's what we expect in january right so that's good stuff and welcome to all you that are watching via facebook or youtube thank you for joining us as well make sure you like and subscribe and share and do all that stuff so that other people can learn what's going on here at community life church because god's doing some good stuff here amen all right well our mission here at Community Life Church is to help people to know God, find purpose, and experience life. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of people that live life without purpose. There's a lot of people that live life and never really experience true life. Because until you know God, you're not going to really know what your purpose is, and you're not going to really experience the fullness that God has for you. So that's our goal here, to help people to know that today. Um, again, we're glad you joined us. If this is your first time with us, there is a uh, Connect card in the seat back in front of you. It's going to look like the screen up here. If you grab that card, fill out those few lines, and drop it in the box at the back on the way out, uh, we'd just like to connect with you, let you know what's going on, and uh, welcome you uh, to, to what's happening here at Community Life. Also, our pastors would like to greet you and, and say hello as well. Um, this is the part of the service where we receive tithes and offerings. We have several ways to do it. We have the, the church app that I'll tell you about in just a minute. We also have the text to give feature. You can give online, or there's also an envelope in the seat back in front of you as well. You can drop cash or check in that envelope, and at the back of the room, there's a box on your way out. You can drop it in there. Um, we do appreciate everybody that gives. It, it is through your gifts that we're able to do the things that we're able to do. Um, you know, we don't have some big donors that, that, that drop millions of dollars into our laps every, every year or anything like that. This is all based on what what you give out of your faithfulness. And as we hear at the beginning of a new year, I just want to challenge you this year to think about, you know, at the beginning of the year here, think about what it is you want to give to the kingdom of God this year financially and set a goal for yourself. I don't know if you are a regular tither, if you give 10% of your income every week, but if you don't, maybe this is the chance to say, you know what, I'm going to start, start fresh. It's a new year. We're going to start doing that this year. We're going to start tithing, and we're going to see if God's going to be faithful. And you know what? If you do that, I can promise you he will be faithful to bless you. He will be faithful to take care of you and meet your needs. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to all of a sudden, you know, in, inherit some great, you know, inheritance of millions of dollars. You're not going to wind up with a yacht at the end of the year. Nothing, nothing necessarily like that, right? But the blessings that will flow to your, your family and your house will be incredible. I can promise you that. I know that in my life it's worked that way. As I've given to God, he's continued to give back to us. And, and it's just been a blessing. And we're, we're so glad to be part of that. And I want to encourage you to, just to take a minute this year, the beginning of this year, and to start, say, what do I want to do this year? What did I do last year? 
And what can I do to give more this year? Because I think that, you know, we should be wanting to give God more. Amen? So uh, on that note, I just want to say a blessing, Lord. Thank you for the ability to generate wealth, that you have given us that. that you have blessed us with, with strong bodies, with, with uh, the ability to work and the ability to provide for our families. I thank you, Lord, that you take care of us and meet our needs. And, Lord, if there's anybody that, that's watching online or anybody in this room that, that is struggling financially, Lord God, they need a, a new job or they need a, a provision in some way, I just pray that you would bless them and take care of them. And, Lord, as, as we all give today, Lord God, I pray that you would Take that. Use it for your glory, that more and more people will come to the knowledge of you. And I pray that your blessing would be upon the households and, and all those that give, Lord God, that you, you would be faithful to your word, which we know you are. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you once again to everybody that gives to what, what's going on here. Um, now, we recently debuted our Community Life Church app. If you haven't downloaded it, I recommend that you do that. Uh, this app We'll, we'll let you know what, what's going on here at Community Life Church. It's kind of like, you know, we used to do the, the paper bulletins. Well, it's on the app now. You don't have to do that. If you, if you uh, volunteer in, in, in children's or you volunteer in any of the other areas that, that we have volunteers, we also have uh, schedules up on that app as well. We're also able to contact you and notify you if there's, um, like, inclement weather and we have to shut down for some reason, you know, for safety issues or whatever, we would notify you through that. So make sure you download that app. You can go to Community Life Church. Um, Dot, dot org slash events and click on the purple and white cross looks like the picture you see up on the screen up there download that and then also make sure that you uh turn on the notifications because the notifications is what allows us to let you know what what else is happening here we promise you we will not blow your phone up with notifications because nobody's got time for that and nobody likes that right so we're going to give you a few notifications as possible but we are going to do that um we are still looking for volunteers to join team life yeah. guys we need some people to help keep this place clean so if you have any time to spare, whether it be one or two hours a month, one or two hours a week, we could use your help in whatever capacity you're able to do that. If you would, and you can sign up on the, uh, on the app. You can sign up to volunteer. You could also do it on our website as well. Um, we, just, we need some help specifically with housekeeping, and that's something that, that we believe anybody can do. If anybody's willing to do, we, we need some help with that area. I also want to remind everybody about our prayer meetings. Yes. Guys, I don't know how to make this any more emphatic than it is. But if you're not coming to prayer meeting on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Tuesday mornings from 1030 to 1130, Wednesday evenings from 7 to 830, you are missing out. It is a, a, a powerful time where we simply get together. We, we invite God's presence here. We, we pray over this church. We pray over the families of the church. We pray over our city. We pray over our nation. We pray over anything and everything that God leads us to pray for. And there is a power that comes whenever we unite in prayer. And with everything going on in the world today, we need... Yeah. As much prayer as we can, we can get. Because we need God to intervene in our situation, do we not? Yes. And so when we call upon him, when his people call out to him, he promises that he will deliver. Yes. And so I just encourage you, come on Tuesdays, come on Wednesdays, whatever your schedule allows. Come both if you can. Um, it, it is a, a great time, and it will encourage your faith. So uh, without taking up any more time, I just want to welcome Pastor Steve as he comes to share the word with us. Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I uh, would like to call Pastor Ben and Amanda and Pastor Mamie up, please. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because Pastor Ben has been our right-hand man for 16 years. And 39. <laughs> 39. Oh, boy. Can I tell you some stories? We had our ducks clean out of our... Uh, Furnace, you know what we found? Tons of rocks, G.I. Joes, cars. <laughs> so, the truth is, for those 16 years, he's, he's developed our children's ministry and done many things to help us in our computers, etc. He's the IT guy trying to work things out that way, and then he's whatever I need. <laughs> I forgot this, Ben, help me. <laughs> and Amanda, Amanda is along his side, and she does a great amount of things for this church also. And what is our pleasure is, well, what happened in December, Pastor Ben came to us and said, you guys need a sabbatical, you need a break, because we haven't taken one. And now it's been an Amanda's turn to take the sabbatical. 
This is really important because if you read scriptures, Jesus Christ went away from the crowds and rested. And so I want you to just stretch your hands out, and we're going to pray for this couple. Pastor Mamie, we're going to pray. Father God, we ask that you would refresh them during this time, that you would blow the wind of your spirit upon them. Yes, and bring refreshment. No, oh, your word is like the dew that causes the plants to spring forth. And the fire of your spirit brings altars off, uh, coals off your altar. And so I'm asking you at this time, Lord, minister to this couple and Warren and Haley. <laughs> So that they are refreshed, that they have this sensitive spirit when they come back to the spirit of the living God. We ask and we thank them, Lord. We thank you, Father, for sending them. We really do. And I bless them, bless them, bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> love you. Love you, love you. <laughs> it's hockey season. I wasn't sure if I was going to get checked or not. <laughs> you know, the Penguins have lost too, so I thought it would be a little more difficult. <laughs> well, I, I, I'd like you to open up your Bibles to uh, Ephesians chapter 1, and this is one of uh, many spirit-given prayers. Uh, there's Two in Ephesians, as a matter of fact, one in chapter 1, one in chapter 3. There's one in Philippians, there's one in Colossians, there's one in Thessalonians. And I suggest as you read the scriptures that you start to pray those, uh, uh, own them yourself and pray those uh, scriptures. Uh, we do on Tuesday mornings at uh, 10.30 to 11.30 and then uh, 7 on Wednesday evening. Uh, we, we pray for many things, but we pray for your families, and we actually pray this prayer for you. We, it usually always comes around, and we pray this prayer for you, and uh, I want you to understand that to receive any prayer request given to God, it takes faith. Yeah. It takes faith, and so I'm inviting you to come at one of those times so that we can add our faith with you so that you will have some prayers answered. Now, that's what a gospel community does. You come and you, you, you say, man, I'm struggling in this area. We pray. The church prays for you. And there's great power when two or three are gathered, the Spirit of Christ is here. And then it says there also when two or three agree on anything on this earth, Jesus said that his Father in heaven would bring it to pass. So come on those days and make your prayer request known so that we can add our faith with yours. That's called gospel community. And if you notice that Chris has an exact sweater on as I do, I just wanted <laughs> to let you know that I wasn't really pay playing the bass. <laughs> <laughs> yes, gospel community. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Our wives is right. <laughs> if I'm shopping, it's in a sporting goods store. <laughs> well, did you find uh, Ephesians chapter 1? We're going to pray that first part of that prayer. It will be 17 and 18. And again, as you open your Bible up. I want you to really take a look at that and then personalize it. Underline it. If it's not underlined in your Bible, please underline it so that you and your wife or your loved ones can pray that prayer for yourselves. And it's really important, you know. It's really important. So uh, let's, let's add your faith to mine and we're going to pray this. I ask the, the the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. 
I pray that the eyes of our heart, the eyes of our understanding, our spiritual eyes would be enlightened so that we will know what is the hope of his calling us to himself. And let us see the riches of the glory of his inheritance in each other, your saints. Amen and amen. I, I, I don't know a better time to pray this prayer. I, I really don't. We definitely need the spirit of wisdom right now. And it's, it's majorly important that you are able to comprehend what's happening around us and what is happening in the spirit realm. It's important for us to understand these things simply because what happens in the natural originates in the spirit realm. This is important for us. How many have read anything about the end times? The book of Revelation. I invite you to read the book of Revelation. You know, that'll, that'll put things in order. It'll help you get things, but it's still quite a mystery. So to think that you're going to understand that, it's... Uh, <laughs> Well, it's still a mystery. It's hidden from our eyes. Some things are revealed. Do you remember the disciples that were on the road to Emmaus? And Jesus came up and started walking with them. He started to describe scriptures, bringing them to the truth of who he was. But they didn't know him. It wasn't revealed to him who he was until he sat down and broke bread and gave it to him. Then he, their eyes were opened. God is a great communicator, and some of the things that God has in store are going to be a mystery for us. That's where faith comes in. That's where we trust him. That's where we trust him. I love that song, Bring the Winds of Testing. How many robustly sang that song? <laughs> Because it's in your tests and trials, your faith is purified. If we understand that, then we can go through our tests and our trials a little easier, a little better. And Paul says, you know, these light afflictions, it's pretty amazing. But if you look at Paul's life, he was beaten, stoned, left for dead, thrown in prison, years and years in prison. And, these, and then, you know, betrayed by the church, etc., he, he said, these light afflictions will not compare to the glory that's going to be revealed. And so uh, we have to have an eternal perspective on things, not just in the urgent or in the day, in the moment. It's important. We, you know, we're seeing Satan's influence bo to a boiling point right now. It, it, you know, he is called the God of this world, little g, and remind him. And whenever you're speaking to him, look down because Jesus says he's under your feet. <laughs> he's called the father of lies. He's a deceiver. He's the serpent of old. And we see his influence now on his, his committed followers. He, we see his influence on unbelievers. And we see his in, influence actually on some Christians. And we need... An eternal word of God to guide us, to anchor us during these troubled times. Amen? Amen. These times are turbulent. The culture of man is continuing to prove Scripture right. And they're saying that wrong is right and right is wrong. And that's a true sign of the end times, folks. But... This is the time that the church needs to make God-honoring decisions. You know, I say, I say the church. And what happens when I say church or somebody says church or the body of Christ, what, what happens is that we, we come into this zone of seeing vast majority of peoples and we're all singing kumbaya. The church is you. You're the church. Individually, you're the church. So we all need to start making 
God-honoring decisions. Amen? Yeah, it, it, this is a time that's totally uncertain. <laughs> you know, one says this, the other says that. You know, clashing heads, <laughs> talking heads. The media itself is, is propagating fear. It is true. It is true. They're creating and have been doing it for decades. 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 They're creating a group think culture and it's all according to the god of this world some wants to limit free speech some wants to take our guns <laughs> both of those things are against the constitution you know so in order to do that they'll have to change the constitution another one says they need to deprogram trump supporters I heard it. These are things I heard. And they, they want to put people in re-education camps so they start to think like they do. And too many people, even Christians, are being informed by the media. <laughs> They're being informed by the media. The mass media. Because years ago there was a survey done and they changed and watched a bunch of television stations. They all use the same word, describe the same thing. It's a plan, folks. It is. And we have to be, we have to be solid because everything is accelerating. Everything is, is, is escalating. And it's, like I say, a boiling point. Everything's changing so quickly. Everything. That's why the body of Christ, you, me, we have to continually be strong in a gospel community. We really do. We all need anchors of understanding in God's word. This situation, that situation, this situation. It's because things are so rapidly changing that you don't want to be tossed to and fro by the sea of culture. Because that's the point. You can't be blown around by the wind. The wind that's coming from the media. We want to be blown around by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but we need a compass. We need an anchor. We cannot afford to be tossed to and fro. We are a royal priesthood. That's in the Bible. Do you know that you are a royal priesthood? The church is the bride of Christ. You are a royal priesthood. That's pretty cool, amen? What happens is people read the headlines or they listen to the headlines. Breaking news. And you either get discouraged or encouraged or you're now starting to be filled, filled with fear. And it's so easy for us to be updated. Updated. Breaking news. News alert. Just hopefully don't, I hope that you don't have one of those buzzers when they, like sports guys do, you know, if, if they score, you get a buzz on your phone and it's like, oh, they scored. <laughs> <laughs> but, what, but what do we do? What do you compare What's being said in the media, what do you compare it to? <laughs> is what the media portraying, is it right? Is it right? What do you personally judge what's happening by? By your emotions? Too many people are going into the future being led by their emotions. And we need the anchor. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I want you to turn to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I, I've, I've titled this one, uh, Wisdom and Truth from Above. Wisdom and Truth from Above. Don't we need that now? Because you know that truth never changes Facts will change. 
But truth never changes. This is some of my favorite parts of the Bible, John 14 through 17. So let's, let's start off in uh, verse 17, or verse 13. This, is, this, is, this was written, this is the time of life that Jesus is ready to go to the garden and be executed. And so he's praying to the Father for you and I. These are, I call this, this is the Lord's Prayer in John chapter 17. Everybody's called and dubbed the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in here. But the disciples came and said, teach us how to pray. So that's kind of like the disciples' prayer. <laughs> it's good. It's Never mind. <laughs> Let's read this here. It says in, John, in 13, chapter 17, verse 13. But now I come to you. Jesus is talking to his Father. But now I come to you. And these things I speak in the world so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. This is going to be a side thought, but how many want this joy? Huh? I want this joy. I, I, <laughs> because the Bible declares the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we need to tap into his joy. Amen. But how do we do that? Right here it says, right before that. We can have this joy. And we, you know, for months we had joy boxes up. You could be a walking joy box for somebody. Twinkly, bright, yeah. <laughs> they were down, so I didn't have a... Uh, <laughs> A visual. <laughs> Look what he says here. Let's start this again. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, so they may have my joy made full in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but keep them from the evil one. They're not of this world, even as I'm not of this world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. And as you have sent me into the world, I also send them into the world. Here's our compass to navigate in the, the cultural sea, the cultural, cultural storm that we're all involved with. His word is truth. His word is truth. This is the hope that we have as an anchor. It is a sure foundation. It is steadfast. And you, anybody who's been walking with God, man, you know it's true. You know it's true. According to Scripture, and the, the easy wisdom you can gain down of Scripture, there's going to be turbulent times for the church. Uh, I perceive that the government will start changing laws, which will be a wind of change given by the Antichrist. And it'll be putting more pressure on the church of Jesus Christ. Remember, you're the church. Remember, you're the bride of Christ. Pressure's coming. So, you know, turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You and I have to understand that God is preparing us for what's coming. And we need wisdom from above. We need truth. We can't just simply be informed by the media. You can't be informed with another brother and sister in Christ that information, even though it might be the Word of God, you have to do something with it. Don't be in just informed. Amen? Breaking news. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Again, this is, this, we're continuing this series, Awake 2021. Truth and wisdom from above. 
I, I did say last week that I believe this decade is going to be troublesome. Uh, it, it's going to be dangerous. Uh, and, but I also said for the church, the true church of Jesus Christ, it's going to be glorious. Again, it, when does the light shine brightest? When it's dark. And when we are anchored into the truth of God's word, we're going to be able to navigate by his leading. He's our compass in what we have to deal with. Because we're going to have to deal with things. Nothing's going back to the way it was. Nothing. Okay, did you find this? Okay. Here's a side thought, though. If you're leaning completely on the Internet for your Bible, I'm, I'm saying that uh, you might lose that. You might lose that. I say you could lose that. We, we see censorship happening right before our eyes. And so I recommend you get a paper Bible. You have one. Amen? Because it would be horrible to be dealing with the life circumstances that we are without your anchor, without your guide. You know, it goes back to the Ephesians prayers. We need to have our eyes of our understanding opened. We need, we need wisdom. Father God, I'm asking you to, to do that. I'm asking you to open the eyes of our understanding. Deal with our hearts, Lord. You're a better communicator than we are a listener, and I know that you will communicate with us. We need insight and wisdom. We need understanding. Father, I'm asking you to write your laws on our hearts and on our minds. In Jesus' name. That is a serious prayer, and we need that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. So we found out where truth is. Truth is in the Word of God. It's the same. It'll be the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. It's the same. It is the same. And the Bible declares that there's, there's laws in there. Law of faith, law of forgiveness, law of mercy. Amen? So we need to understand... Where we're eventually going is the kingdom of God, and we should be prepared to go to the kingdom of God because we know him. Amen? Look at, here we go. Verse 30, did you find it? But God has brought you into union with Jesus Christ, and God has made Christ to be our wisdom. By him we're put right with God, we become God's holy people and are set free. We have an anchor, which is God's word. And now we have wisdom, Jesus Christ. Didn't John 17, Jesus spoke, sanctify them, set them apart, transform them by the truth? Amen? His word is truth. And I like this verse 18. It says, as you sent me into the world, I also send them. How did God send Jesus? <laughs> With power and authority. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word of God is Jesus himself. So you want more of Jesus? Of course, this pastor will tell you, start reading the word. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 says this about who you and I are. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify, set them apart, transform them, and cleanse us by the washing of the water of the word that he might present her, the church, as a glorious church. Everybody say glorious church. Doesn't that sound good? Oh, man. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she should be holy and without blemish. Now, this is a statement for God's people. Heaven is speaking to you. Heaven is speaking to me. Once again, we... We understand a glorious work is going to be, it's going to take some work, amen? 
we will. But we can't be like, oh, I'm not so bad. I'm pretty good. That must be talking about them. Lord's got a lot of work to do in them. <laughs> or he has a lot of work to do in the Lutherans. Or he has a lot of work to do in the Catholics or the Baptists or the Presbyterians, the Methodists. They're all messed up. Wow, we're doing good. <laughs> Who's the church? <laughs> you are. You're boxed in. <laughs> He's talking to you. He's talking to me. <laughs> Glorious church. You know, it, it, listen. You and I are the bride of Christ. And we've read in Ephesians there that he, he, he's washing us by the water of the word. If, if we're not in the word, you get where I'm going. You get where I'm going. Because the word is truth. The word is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our wisdom. Right there, he's our anchor. He's our compass. Because just like a ship at sea, you can't always just be anchored. We're going someplace, folks. We are that royal priesthood. He's dubbed us ambassadors for his kingdom. Ambassadors. That means we represent him. That means we speak what he speaks. Hello? We speak what he speaks. <laughs> all of us have fallen short in this, folks. Amen? And we, we, we've all fallen short. We've all made mistakes. We've all let him down. But we have to recognize that. We have to ask for forgiveness for that because it's a sin, right? Yeah. But here's the key. He's merciful. The Bible declares that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't know about you, but I love that. I, and I've used it so many times, I can memorize it. I just like it. <laughs> Listen, we've all fall short. But here's the key. Let's don't just sit in... Oh, I did this. I did that. Oh, I really failed you, Lord. And sit there for three days until you feel better and then get on with the mission that you're supposed to be on. You're ambassadors. You're a royal priesthood. We have the truth. And this isn't really breaking news. <laughs> it's news forever and ever. It's always new. You know, when you read the Bible and you got something down, it's really cool. And then maybe six weeks or so, seven weeks, you come back and read the same thing. And you're like, oh, I never saw that before. We have to yield to the Spirit of God so we can walk the path that he has for us to walk in this troubled time. And when we do, that doesn't mean that you and I are going to have no confrontation. But Jesus says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. Amen? Because the world consciousness is against what we stand for. If Peter, when he was speaking to them in the book of Acts, said, in the last days. So we must be in the last of the last days. So we need to be prepared. We want to be that glorious church that Jesus is coming back for without spot or wrinkle. Amen? That means repent for some of the things that we do. And repentance means not just feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> it means call it out. I did this. I did this. I did this. I lay it before you, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive me and strengthen me so that I don't fall back into the same problem. Amen? That's how we do it. We don't want to... I mean, because when I was an earlier Christian, that's, I waited until I felt better to think I was forgiven. 
And that means you didn't do what he wanted to do the next day. Because you were too caught up with yourself. <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. If we refuse to be transformed, if we refuse to get into the word of God and let it govern our lives, what we'll do, we'll settle for being informed. How about this week? You don't have to raise your hand. Are you being transformed? Did you read the scriptures this week? I mean, did, were you seeking after God this week? Inviting him and having a conversation with him. Letting him correct you. Asking him for help. Asking him the questions. Lord, this is, I'm, I'm in a spot. Lord, I, I don't know which way to go, so I'm asking you to help me. Reveal it to me. Now, how, how do we get an answer? One of the things is if we're not in the Word, we're not as sensitive to the Spirit of God as we should be. It's that simple. It's that simple. You know, that means we have to carve out time to read the Word. Amen? Come on now. I, I really want you to get this. I want you to understand this. I do not know exactly what is going to happen, but I have a general idea because God has written it in his book. There's going to be a major shift in this country. Major. And we have to minister to these people on both sides. You're an ambassador for Christ. You're not an ambassador for Biden. You're an ambassador for Christ. You're not an ambassador for Trump or the Republican Party. Amen? You and I are aliens, the Bible declares. Our citizenship is in heaven. We belong to a different kingdom. Yes, praise the Lord. And we have to represent that kingdom. We have to go into the darkness. That's how you're going to have to navigate Sometimes we might go into a hostile situation. But we're going to have to go there. And we're going to have to let our light shine. Yeah. We really do. So I want you to get this so that you're prepared. Men, I've been reading about David's mighty men. <laughs> Phenomenal. Oh my gosh. Courage, bravery. The Lord just waiting for somebody to step up and so he can show himself strong. Amen? I'm not going to settle for information and being informed. I am looking to be transformed. And it starts when you're born again. When you accept Jesus Christ, it says that the Spirit of God comes and recreates you. You're not refurbished. You become a brand new creature in Christ, the Bible declares. You become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> and here's the key. His standard is the standard, isn't it? We're not going to move him off of it. What God calls beautiful is beautiful. What he calls glorious, well, I guess we better find out what his glory is. This is an important distinction because we tend to believe... I'm okay. I've got it. Well, you might, Brother Hagin said this one time, you might have your head to the clouds, and the next moment, your head is where your feet are. <laughs> so we need to press into God. We need to press into what he's got for us. Amen? I desire to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's what he wants. That's what he's purifying his church for. So that we, we respond according to the Beatitudes. That's in Matthew 5 and 6. The Beatitudes. We recognize we're, we're humble in spirit. And we're hungering and thirsting for righteousness. We want to come to that full stature of the fullness of Christ. The Bible declares in Colossians that we, you can be filled up to the fullness of God. 
I want that. You know, Jesus was like this. Peter was like this. It says when they were reviled, he reviled not. In the Beatitudes, it says to love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Now, if you respond to somebody with words of redemption, you can have your sins forgiven. It can be all washed away. Jesus came for you. That'll blow the mind. It's, it's quote-unquote unworldly. Because they're used to attacking you verbally and being attacked verbally. Amen? Just go to any talk show. I've given it up. I stayed on the sports thing, and I, it's like, gosh. Here's guys that never played football, never did basketball or whatever, and now they're blasting everybody and really don't know what it's like. There's a great quote. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt. I don't have it, but it's it's really great. We, when, here's how we're going to be transformed. When truth, the Word of God, is consistently brought to your heart. When truth is consistently applied to your situation. Control your anger, bringing it under the submission of Jesus Christ. When truth is consistently applied, wisdom comes. And with that combination, that's when transformation happens. So that's, you cannot get hands laid on you and then all of a sudden you've got this. God brings it right to the, where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> worship team will you come up I want you to play when truth is consistently applied wisdom comes and transformation happens and then because of that inward work we're going to produce the fruit that's acceptable to God. Remember last week we talked about the fig trees? We want to bear fruit, amen? And it takes transformation to bear fruit. But to bear fruit and to have transformation, you need to apply the truth of God's Word in your life. Because He's coming back for you to be a glorious church without you without spot or wrinkle me without spot or wrinkle and you and I have major 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 part to play in that amen I want you to take a look at this next scripture remember our, our scripture in John 17 it says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. It's so great that the Bible is so consistent. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. It says, for the Lord gives wisdom. He gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity and guarding the path of justice. And he preserves the way of his godly ones. When truth is consistently applied, wisdom comes, transformation happens. Scripture declares that we're to work out our, our salvation with fear and trembling, but not in our own strength not in our own strength. For it's God who is all the while effectually working in you, both to will and do His good pleasure. 
We have God himself working that direction. Let's, let's just start to agree with him, entwine our lives with him. This is a season of confusion, not just for the United States. It's, it's for the whole world. And we're seeing masses of people being blown to and fro. It shouldn't be for the church. We have to be the light in darkness. We have to be the city on a hill. We are the hope for the lost. I, I, I want you to bow your head because we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Listen, when everybody's losing their minds in panic around you, <laughs> you'll be able to be stable and fixed because you're going to be standing on the rock. And what we prayed for earlier, Lord God, I ask that the manifold wisdom of you, you, you would come upon us. Let's not be resistant to work. Lord, we forgive us. Forgive us because we have been resistant to your work. You're the living God. You, you're the Alpha and you're the Omega. You're the creator of all things. You've created us. So we ask you to forgive us, Lord, for resisting what you want us to do. I'm asking you to stir our hearts. Stir our hearts, Lord, so that we would be heart hungry and thirsty for your word thirsty from your word because you said from your mouth comes knowledge and understanding once again we ask you to forgive us for not seeking your kingdom first that scripture says he gives wisdom the Lord himself gives wisdom and the book of James says he gives wisdom without fault finding father what that, that is remarkable. I, I thank you, Lord, that you're granting to us the spirit of wisdom and the knowledge. Lord, we are desperate for that. We are desperate for that. I, again, Lord, open the eyes of our understanding. Open our spirit eyes so that we might know the way that you're calling. That we might recognize your voice. I'm asking you Stir our spirits, Lord. Stir us up. Stir us up, Lord. Stir us up. Oh, Lord. Stir us up. We submit to your will, Lord. We want your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Have your way in our heart. Have your way in our mind. Have your way in our relationships. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. If you're here today and you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you're on the outside of all this. And we're inviting you to become part of it. If you are recognized that you have sinned against God Almighty, and there's no way. There's no way for forgiveness except through Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by Him. If that's you, just lift your hand and we'll pray a prayer. Okay. Everybody recognizes their saint. This is what, if we do what we've just discovered, that his word is truth, that he grants wisdom to us. He is an anchor for the soul in, in tumultuous times. He's our compass to navigate through it, the wind and the waves. We yield our heart to him. When we apply the truth, wisdom comes and transformed. This is what he's going to do. He's going to allow his manifold wisdom through his church and display it to the rulers and the authorities and heavenly places. You and I, 
have a place in the kingdom that is vital, that is important. Father God, I ask that you would just surround us. Surround us with your protection. I thank you for giving us the wisdom we need. I thank you for stirring our hearts to draw closer to you, to press into your word, to hear your voice, to be led by your spirit, to navigate through these difficult times. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We do worship and honor you in this place. For you are expecting a glorious church. And we declare that that's us. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Our hope is that in some way today, whether it be through the message, through worship, or through just rubbing shoulders with other believers, that you and your family have been encouraged to take another step closer to Jesus today. I want to remind you that we do have the box in the back. If you want to drop an offering in there or uh, drop off a, a, a guest card, we'd, we'd love to connect with you. Um, if you need prayer for anything, we have our prayer prayer warriors ready over here. They want to pray with you. They're ready to pray with you. I don't know what the needs are in your life, but if you want somebody to just to agree with you for something, make sure you go over there, talk to them, and let them pray with you today. I want to thank you once again for joining us. Make sure that on the way out that you bless somebody. Tell them to have a great week. We're so glad you joined us today. Be, uh, be blessed as you go. You're dismissed.